I'm Richard Price, and I'd like to talk about curing lights and light curing technique. Curing lights have become an essential part of today's modern dental practice. We use them in bonding, resins, cements, crowns, and orthodontics. There are many different lights to choose from on the market, but which is a good one to choose? One of the problems we face is that all these curing lights seem to produce an acceptably hard surface at the top of the restoration, but we can't tell if the bottom is soft. Here we can see an example of a tooth where the bottom of the restoration is noticeably soft, and we have the situation where it's hard at the top and soft at the bottom. No matter how good your bonding agent is, the restoration will fail. So which curing light do I choose? You need to remember that curing lights are tested in the laboratory where there is perfect access to the restoration. The situation is completely different in the mouth, especially when you are trying to access the last molar. You need to think about the form and function of the curing light and decide for yourself if you can access all parts of the mouth. This is especially important in the bottom of the proximal boxes, where due to the shadowing effect, you may get insufficient light and therefore insufficient cure. As curing lights have become smaller, you'll notice that some curing lights have got very small light tips at the end of them. And while this increases the radiance, it unfortunately means that you have to use the lights many times to achieve the same coverage as a light with a larger tip. Therefore, in most instances, I recommend using a curing light that has a wide tip, and in addition, the tip should deliver a uniform irradiance across the entire tip, so that there are no hot spots or cold spots of irradiance, since this would produce an unevenly cured resin restoration. It's important to make sure the light has been approved for use in your country. For example, is it CSA and Health Canada approved? Back in 2008, the JCDA ran an article reminding dentists that equipment should be CSA approved, otherwise they may run the risk of not being insured in the event of a malfunction or of damage. More recently, in 2012, there was an article reminding dentists not to purchase grey market products. As reported by Gordon Christensen, many of the lights that are available online only have a very small tip, which, although it boosts the radiance, means that you have to use the light many times to achieve the same coverage. In addition, the electrical output from these lights is not very stable as the battery discharges. This means that over time, the output decreases, often without the operator knowing. Before light curing, check to see if there's any damage or debris on the end of the light guide, and if there is, remove it. I recommend the use of infection control barriers over the curing light, and these should be snugly fitting. It's important to make sure you don't position the seam of the barrier across the end of the light tip. If you do put the seam over the tip, See how this affects the light beam uniformity at the end of the light tip. I strongly recommend checking the light output regularly, and I recommend keeping a room log of all the curing lights that you have in your practice. Depending on how busy your practice is, you may want to check the light every day or every week, so that you can identify if a light is starting to fail. There are several different dental radiometers on the market, but don't expect the radiance results achieved with one radiometer to be the same as the radiance results achieved on another radiometer. So it's important to always use the same radiometer with the same curing light tip when you're measuring the curing lights. The light should deliver between 500 and 2000 milliwatts per centimeter squared in the standard mode. Some people promote a concept called exposure reciprocity, whereby if you double the radiance, you can halve the curing time because you're delivering the same amount of energy. But unfortunately, this concept doesn't always hold true, especially when the irradiance goes above 2000 milliwatts per centimeter squared. The danger is that some manufacturers have produced very high output curing lights in an attempt to reduce curing times. If you use these high output lights, it's important to make sure that you use them properly, otherwise they can burn the tissues. The light should be placed directly over the restoration and you should minimize exposure to the gingiva. Blowing air over the soft tissues when light curing can help, or else you can just have a five second pause between each light exposure. 
It's important to follow the instructions for use for the composite that you're using. Set the light to the correct exposure mode and exposure time. Having done all these things, it's important that you know how to use the curing light properly. If you don't watch what you're doing, it's very easy for the light to gradually wander further and further away from the restoration and you'll end up with an undercured resin at the bottom. So I recommend using appropriate eye protection and watching what you're doing so that you stay on target. You should position the tip close to the restoration and perpendicular directly above it. I also recommend using supplemental lateral exposures. These are especially important when light curing the resin in a class 2 proximal box. Be very careful when the distance between the tip and the restoration is more than 5 mm or when there's an angle, because if there are angles, you'll get an inadequate cure. As you can see here on the right hand side, the composite resin in the distal box is not cured at all. So in summary, I strongly recommend wearing eye protection, stabilize the tip over the restoration, and watch what you're doing when light curing. When you finish light curing, clean and disinfect the unit using the recommended disinfectant. And if your curing light has got vents in it, be very careful of spraying disinfectant into the vents. The take home message from this presentation is that light curing is important. You should monitor your curing light, read and understand and follow the instructions for use, pay attention when light curing, and use eye protection. I'd like to thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me at rbprice.tal.ca. Thank you.